So our next speaker, someone who embodies passion and wisdom in every sense of the world. He's coming here to stop me right now. I just have to say this. Seriously, I wrote a whole paragraph last night about him. He told me to just say one thing or two. He has devoted his life to Islam. MashaAllah. He speaks with an intensity that can ignite a flame in the hearts of people. His words are not simply spoken, but passionately delivered. I love him, and I don't, I'm sure that everybody here loves him. I heard about him when I was in Pittsburgh in 2008. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala join him with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. Somebody that I know he loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Sheikh Hassan, bless your family. We love you. Allah, you are the cream of the crop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. All right. <laughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala abdal al mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli wa ba'd You can see the eloquency of Shaykh Atif, I don't need to comment and by Allah, like I'm telling you, wallahi, like I love that I have a community like you I love every single Muslim that I see I love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided us with each other May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guard this love we have for, for each other in our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us through his love and the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that our hearts are able to reflect this love that can change a world that's dying for love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with love so that it will pour to all the people around us. I mean, jazakumullah khair again. And... Uh, and uh, يعني, wallahi, like, uh, being, it's an honor to be here and speak to you. And whenever we want to speak about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I always get those mixed feelings, ha very happy and yet very scared. Very happy because you want to speak and there is so much to say and you don't know which, which, what to say because everything he does is amazing. But also very scared that the, the darkness in my heart will eclipse the beauty of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I always start with making a dua personally, Ya Rabbi, do not let any darkness in my heart eclipse the light of the beauty of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or your light. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow me and allow you to have a polished heart that reflects the divine light of Allah and the beauty of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Type. To start, I would say again, I'll start with love as we spoke about love right now. Sometimes when we love, the concern of a true lover is not that he, he loves or not, is am I loved or not? The concern is really, if you love someone, your biggest concern is, does he or she love me? The concern of many people nowadays, and you can see it in social media, it's all about this, hey, look at me, look at me, I want hearts, look at me. I want to own the hearts of people. When you ask what people want to own in this life, it's, money is not it, because money is used to, to buy, something else, al jah status, I want the hearts of people. I want, I want to be loved, not only to love, I want to be loved too. And the question for a true seeker of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I know that I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the source of all love, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but you know what's my question, which has to do with the topic of today? My main concern, will I make it? Will I make it there? I'm afraid, I'm afraid the, the obstacles are so many. I'm not doing well. Sometimes I know, I know that I should be following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I know I should be, but I can't, I have ailments. It's too difficult. What if the one I love, I cannot reach? And the ayah that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent in the Quran dealing with this and I open with it. 
قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله and there is a very interesting way to understand this ayah this ayah says what say if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follow me follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah will love you and will forgive you and we're speaking about special love now this ayah some people use it in the first oh, okay the sign that you love Allah is that you follow the commands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes right but the meaning I want to share with you is the following this ayah is for the people that are aching the people that many people that come to the message they're aching I want to be better but I can't make it and I'm scared I want to, to, to be like the companions but looking to myself the obstacles are so many what can I do Ya Rabbi I need help I need help and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is comforting us he's telling us he's calling on the people that are yearning but are afraid yearning but have obstacles wanting to be better but I don't know how to do it I don't know it's, it's too I might not be able to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what if you're that person that really loves Allah but are afraid that you will not reach your destination I responded to you I sent you a guide I sent you someone that's going to take you by your hand and get you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala follow the guide he's there to make it easy for you it's a gift of rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala innama ana rahmatun muhda and when we look to this ayah we say subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such a mercy his path is supposed i'm supposed to follow him we all know this but the main question and the topic here what's wrong sometimes we we see i can't follow him sometimes we follow the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but yet we're not doing well you find people that are trying to follow the sunnah and they pray but internally they're not at peace they don't have compassion they, what's going on right and to start this i'm going to quote a hadith for you because this is the, the, when we speak about the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, I think there is two elements that are missing or two elements that I want to share with you today that we need to pay attention to. The title of the talk is how? How can I apply the sunnah of Muhammad ﷺ? How? There are obstacles. Tell me how. Tell me. The, the, don't tell me just the sunnah. I can tell you all the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. How can I really apply it in such a way that it changes me? that it takes me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does what he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to do, purify my heart. And I'll quote one hadith for you and then we'll apply it. I'm going to apply it like two, three examples inshallah so we, we, we have some working cases. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looking at Anas ibn Malik, this young man that really loved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his servant, and giving him advice as such. And he told him the following, Ya Bunay, in istata'at, أن تبيت وليس في قلبك غشا لأحد فافعل فإن ذلك من سنتي ومن أحيا سنتي فقد أحبني ومن أحبني فإنه معي سبحان what is that what the translation he's looking at Anas ibn Malik young man and he's telling the phone son if you can every single night when you go to bed you make sure that your heart has no ill feelings towards anybody at all clean heart Please do and notice this what's coming next because this is a part of my sunnah. And whoever revives a sunnah of mine, indeed, he's the one that loves me. And whoever loves me will be with me on the day of judgment. What do you get from this hadith? When we speak about the sunnah of Muhammad, yeah, uh, uh, salah, uh, dhikr, uh, but the sunnah has two parts outward, there is inward sunnah. The hadith I spoke about, what is the sunnah here? It's not something you do outward. It's something you do with your heart. And you know what I think is missing? If you follow the outward without the inward, you miss the soul of the sharia, the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I want to follow him outward and inward. And this hadith is telling me what? That when he sallallahu alayhi wa is, is is doing things, I need to watch for two things his outward actions but his inward state this hadith is about what reviving reviving not only the outward the inward state and whoever does this is the one that loves me and whoever loves me is with me so what does this mean let's take some examples how do you apply the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with this sense of the inward let's practice i'm going to give you like a hadith 
two or three that we all know. And let's see if we can apply this. So here is a hadith we all know, right? The Prophet وسلم, is praying, he's leading prayers, right? And he hears a voice of a baby crying. What is the sunnah in this case? What did he وسلم, do? You guys remember? He said he hastened his prayers, right? If I'm praying and leading the prayer and he وسلم, loves to pray, he can recite the whole night. But if he hears a baby crying, what happens? He makes the prayer shorter. So I want to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So let's say I'm praying and I hear a child crying. What should I do? Shorten my prayers. If you did that, you say, yeah, I followed the sunnah. Not yet. You followed the sunnah. You followed the outward sunnah. But you did not follow the sunnah yet. Why? Because he explained something when he said this hadith. He, he said why he does that. He said the heart behind the sunnah. See, the sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, is not just an outward action. It's an outward action coming from a heart in a specific state. I feel a specific thing. I am in a certain state that causes me to act, speak, and do certain things. This is the sunnah. So he وسلم, said what? Yes, I, I shortened the prayer. Why? Because I felt for his mother. I feel the concern of his mother, the fitna. She's concerned about her child. It's so difficult for her. I feel what she feels. I feel her pain. So because I feel her and I feel how difficult it is for her. It's, it's very difficult. My son is crying and you're not tending and the imam is making it long. It's, I'm a mother. Because of, because of the way I looked, I felt the mother. Shafaqah. That's why I shortened the prayer. So if I'm following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I ask myself the following. When I hear a child crying, I shorten the prayer. Did I feel shafaqah or did I feel anger? Why did they bring their child to the masjid? I might still do the right thing, shorten the prayer, but after the salah I'm doing this. That's not the sunnah. You miss the heart and then it becomes harsh. And then the light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is eclipsed. Eclipsed completely. You're, you're saying the right things, you're doing the right things, but the heart is not the same. The words are coming dark. And therefore they say, it's not about the words that leave our lips, it's about the heart from which the words come. So from that we learn what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the essence of his mission, that I think we need to embody. حب الخير للناس الشفقة على الخلق Am I like this? Do I love goodness for others? Do I have sense of sympathy and empathy? شفقة الخوف المقرون بالرحمة You know what? You know خوف is when, when a mother is afraid on her son he's going to catch a cold you know she wakes, wakes up in the night oh he's not covered and she goes and covers him she, it's, it's a combination of two things خوف something can hurt him but this is not خوف with what? compassion this is the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything that he does, you'll find that behind it. My question for us, we need to implement that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا And this verse is very powerful. One quick thing about the verse, when Allah describes the sun, Siraj al I use the word Siraj, you know this. Siraj is like an illuminating light, you know, burning lamp, right? The sun. It's a Siraj wa Hajj. When he describes the moon, Qamar al Munira. So Siraj is for the sun, Munira is for the moon. When he describes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, both Siraj wa Munira. His light is like the sun and the moon together. It's very interesting. But this verse has something about the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we need to embody behind his sunnah. Inna arsalnaka, three things. Shahidan, wumubashiran, wa nadira. Look at the order. What's the first thing? Shahidan, what does that mean? Shahid is to witness, but shahid is more than that. When you look to the meaning of Allah's shahid, what does it mean? Three things. A shahid, a witness has to be present, right? You cannot say, I, I witnessed something and I asked, where were you? Where I was somewhere else. Are you present? Do you know what's going on? A shahid, three things. Alladhi yahdur. And this is very powerful. Shahid is someone that's present and knows what's going on. And then he reflects it. He makes it known that he knows. What does that mean? The first part of the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Something that we all need. People need to be seen. People need to be heard. People need to be understood. 
I can't correct before I connect. Connect before you correct. If I jump too fast to Nadir, oh, stop doing this. You didn't connect with me. You have no idea. Do you know what I'm passing through? The first mission of Muhammad sallallahu he has the empathy. He feels the mother crying. I know what she's feeling. And therefore, I make it known that I know by shortening my prayers. So, shahidan is what? Something all humans need. Humans need to be seen. Look at the internet, the social media. It's all, people are screaming, look at me, look at me, look at me. And it's so shallow. I look at you, but I do not understand. It's so shallow. I'm telling you, in therapy, most of the time when people go for counseling, that's what they want. I have now to pay money for someone to listen to me and understand me. We don't have time for each other. The Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam got many a hadith. His ability to focus, to understand you, give you his attention, to be present with you, not distracted, full attention, and then know exactly what you're feeling, and then makes it known to you that he fully understands. It's Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, shahidan, and then mubashira. After giving glad tidings, then nadira. That's the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu. I want to show you this in another example. I'll quote a hadith that we all know, but I'm going to show you again with what we're looking for is not the outward, the inward. And then how to use this hadith to bring something again, how to apply this hadith in my modern world. A hadith is very well known. The story of him and Jabir ibn Abdullah. So Jabir ibn Abdullah, this young man, and this is the battle of the trench, when they were digging and they were hungry and, and and uh, they come and complain. Umar ibn al-Khattab goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and look what he, and, and, and he just, as you know the hadith, he shows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he lifts his shirt and we see a stone, tying a stone on his stomach. Meaning what? I'm very hungry. He's looking, oh, look, oh Prophet, look. And he's speaking to who? The mercy to mankind, right? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as you know, what was his response? He lifted his own shirt and we find two stones. I'm hungry too, ya Umar. I relate to you. You're hungry, I'm hungry, right? We're in it together. But something interesting happened. Jabir ibn Abdullah, as you all know, this young man, he sees what's happening, he says, that's it. The love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What love can do? What we do for the people we love? He goes home, tells his wife, what do we have? Well, not much. We have this and that's it. Everything we have. Prepare it. It's small. I don't care. I'm inviting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has to eat. And then he goes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he tells him, as you all know, oh, Prophet of Allah, I saw why don't you come home? I have some food. Just some food for you. Like, just come and eat. What does Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He looks at Jabir and says, Wahdi, you're inviting me alone? Wahdi ya Jabir? A prophet of Allah, you need the food. Yani it's just like, not that much. Wahdi? And then what does the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? As you know, Ya ma'ashar al-ansar, ya ma'ashar al-muhajireen, oh ansar, everybody. Jabir is inviting us to his house. For dinner, right? Follow me. And as you know the story, Jabir goes disturbed to his wife. What do I do? And she says, did you invite them or he invited them? Well, he did. He knows what he's doing. And he tells Jabir the following. When I do not touch your food till I come. And as you know, the, he, everybody comes and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muslims are organized 10 by 10. They come and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't look. He just serves and puts. Serves, you know, the pot. You don't look and serve and put. And Jabir is watching. Ten eat and leave. Ten eat and leave. The entire army ate. And then he told Jabir, now eat. Now eat. It's a hadith. What do we learn from that? What's the inward sunnah? Right? Notice this. In the beginning, the Prophet ﷺ, Umar came and showed him, I'm hungry. He could have. Did, did any miracle happen? No. Why did this miracle happen? This miracle happened in two conditions. Somebody decided to do something, but this miracle happened for something else. He was teaching something to Jabir. Something more important than being hungry. Being hungry is okay. But thinking that your food is not enough for everybody and that it's only for me and starting to say, no, the resources are scarce and therefore I have to uh, not tell anybody. That's a problem. That's not my sunnah. That's a limiting belief that has to be cracked. The miracle happens for what? For that. How do I apply that? So this, we, you see this hadith, practical application. One time I was in a retreat and the retreat was about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a beautiful retreat, the whole like 12 days, right? And the, the, Alhamdulillah, the Shaykh, and yani, MashaAllah, yani, 
الاولين الاولياء اللي يعني نحسبهم كذلك هي تولد اس ذا فولو هي سيد وي كان نوت بي سبيكينج اباوت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اند يو ار نوت ميكينج يو ار نوت سندينج بيس اند بليسنجز اون تو هيم اي وونت يو ثرو اوت ذا ريتريت اند ذس از سمثينج اي وود لوك وير سبيكينج ذا بيست ثينج يو كان دو ثرو اوت ذس داي اف وير سبيكينج اباوت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سند بيس اند بليسنجز تو هيم سو هي سيد اي وونت اول اوف يو تو سند ا لوت اوف بيس اند بليسنجز اون ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم Came after three, four days, and he said, "I don't think you guys are doing enough." So he said, "Yeah, how many? I mean, what? What's the number you want? What's what's you know, plenty? Three hundred for?" He said, "No, yeah, plenty. Yeah, it's like something three thousand." And I remember what? I said, "Yeah, three, four, maybe five. And one of my friends came to me, and he said, "Yeah, Hassan, I, it's, it's not doable. Look at the schedule of the retreat. Qiyam, uh, we pray." Fajr, and then the Sunnah, and then there is the lecture, and then there is the summary, and then there is the Quran. I, and he said, I calculated it. You know, as Salatu al Nabi, everyone takes me 20 seconds, 5,000 requires, you know, X hours. There is not enough hours in the day. So it's not doable. How can we do this? Right? Applying what we learned. If I want Allah to bless something, remember the hadith of Jabir? You want Allah to bless your food, what do you do? Invite others. Care about others. Care about others, al-khalq, mahabbat al-khalq. Don't do it alone. If you have khair, want good for other people as well. Share with them. So I said, you know, hmm. I, and I just learned this hadith about Jabir. They said, I wonder if I can use this hadith. How would you use that? I said the following. Let me do the following. How do you send peace and blessings? Well, uh, of course, you're going to sh- use the shortest uh, version because I need to do many of them, right? I said, no, no, no. Instead of saying, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad, this is a dua, by the way. Salatu ala Nabi, you understand that the honor of it, if I tell you, you can be making dua for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how, what would it? The dua is, Ya Rabbi, I'm asking you, I can't do anything for him. You bless him, you raise him in rank, you honor him. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala alihi, right? So I said, wait a minute, I'm going to change it based on this hadith. I am not going to do it alone. I'm going to add the following. Allahumma inna nas'aluka an tusalli wa tusallim wa tubarik ala Muhammad. Dear Lord, we, all of us, are asking you to send peace and blessings on Muhammad. And I said, you know what? Let me do it with that heart of his. I'm walking and every time I see someone, I look at that person, he doesn't know that. And as I'm making my dhikr, in my head it's what? Ya Rabbi, me and him. The blessings, it's not only for me, me and him. إنا مي أن هم نسألك we ask you to send peace and blessings to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Can you imagine a believer walking this way? Every time you see a person, you're making dua for you and him. That's Sunnah. That's the Sunnah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Yes, I'm saying the Salatu على النبي, but my heart and it felt different. And then the second part was what? Don't look. You know, you have those counters. And I. And every part of me is like, how, how, how much, how much, how much? But what was the, what did he do? Do not look. Bismillah, start, don't look. And I w- went all day, and then the sheikh came at the end of the day and said, yeah, yalla, how many? 5,000, 6,000, and at that point, I just flipped my counter. It was 10,500. How? How did that happen? It's, it's very difficult. Did happen. The Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wanting good for other people, and I finish with the story of Fudala. Okay, I always share this story, right? Because it, it, it embodies what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yani stood for. This man who wanted to kill the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one of the worst people. Even after Islam was spreading and خلاص فتح مكة, and he got a poisonous dagger, hid it in his abaya. And the Prophet وسلم, is making tawaf and this man is behind him with, this is the worst heart ever. Poisonous heart with hate and, and, and anger. Poisonous dagger in there. And he's looking for a chance, I'll get and just stab him. And as he gets closer to Muhammad وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, turns to him. We know from the shama'il, whenever he speaks, يعني he doesn't turn, he turns the body. So he turned the whole towards Fudala. And he said, Ya Fudala, يا فضالة what is yourself telling you to do and he says إنما أذكر الله I'm just remembering Allah and then he صلى الله عليه وسلم and فضالة is after him again 
He turns to Fudala. Ya Fudala, bima tuhadithuka nafsuk? Inna ma athkuru Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam puts his hand on the chest of Fudala. A chest full of anger, a chest full of envy, a chest with a poisonous dagger. And he said, astaghfirullah ya Fudala. Astaghfirullah ya Fudala. Astaghfirullah ya Fudala. Fudala says, before he puts his hand, he was the most hated person towards me. When he puts his hand on my heart, he became the most beloved person in my heart. What's the sunnah here? There are people outside. We have problems. Where is the hand of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa This hand that's full of what he wanted good for Fudala. Fudala, he will not harm Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will harm himself. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cares for that person. Cares for the enemy. Wants good. Hidayah, guidance for people. So he puts a hand, a handful of rahmah, compassion, and makes dua to Fudala. Where is the hands of the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The light of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's, maybe he's not here, but his sunnah is here. His light is to be reflected through the hearts of those who follow him. The way to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the easiest way is love. Nothing. And I'll finish with a simple practical example for you. Scholars now, you know, psychologists, they, they're objecting that love is an emotion. They say, no, no, love is motivation. And I'll give you a simple example. If you have a swimming pool with sharks in it, and I tell you, jump and swim, I'm not going to do that. How can I make it? If I get a gun and put it in your head, jump or else, yeah, out of fear, I, I'll take my chance with the shark. Maybe he takes my hand and you know, he'd leave the rest of me or something, right? Maybe. So out of fear, fear you, you can push people through fear, right? Uh, maybe through money, greed. Uh, jump into that swimming pool, how much? Do, 10 million, 50, how much would you do it for? Some people, oh, you give me 50 million? I might consider it, right? Not bad. Greed. Greed is a powerful force in the human being. We have many forces. Fear, greed, shahwa. But the strongest force in the human being, the strongest one, is love. Ask a mother if her son is in that swimming pool, what happens? Sharks, crocodiles, I don't care. I'm in. And I will fight the shark. Why? I love my son. Love subdues. Love changes everything. The strongest force that subdues every single force of the nafs is the love. When he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was born, you know from the seerah, light came out and his mother can see the palaces of Sham. Idols fell on the face. The, the fire of Persia got extinguished. If the love of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is born in our hearts, light will come out and we will see the palaces of the hereafter. The passions, the hawa, the, the intellectual biases, the fire of arrogance and, and hate and will be extinguished. The idols of shahwa and lust and desire that we bow down to and prostrate because they're, they will fall on their face. Love is the most powerful thing. I started with a hadith about uh, Anas ibn Malik. I'll finish with one. It has to do with the same topic of love. He here said the following. ما زلت أحب الدباء. منذ رأيت رسول الله يتتبعه في الصحراء. دباء is uh, is pumpkin, right? gourd. So it's a vegetable that they, they use. Them. He says what? I still this this type of vegetable gourd. I love gourd. Since I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم following it in the plate, he صلى الله عليه وسلم loved it. I saw that he loves it. What happens? He didn't say I make myself eat it. I changed. Scholars define love. Love is when the characteristics of the one you love enters onto your characteristics in exchange. Love is very powerful, but it's very dangerous. You love the wrong person. You love the wrong object. Their characteristics, their traits will enter onto me. It's very important for me to love, and it's very important for me to love the right love. Loving the source of love, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Loving the one that is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I get filled with that, then be free to love anybody else. You are good. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts with the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ingrain in us this shafaqah and 
being compassionate to, to, towards mankind, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the best of manners and remove from our hearts all the worst and bad of vices and manners. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik la ilaha illa anta nistaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.